Hi guys and welcome to the mayhem that is my shop on Halloween. So uh, things are a little bit more chaotic than I would like and the videos definitely aren't produced the way I would like. So instead of this beautiful shot of me showing every single component that I'm going to be working with today, um, I just wanted to stop by really quickly and show you some of the materials that you might have some questions on. So I will be using this reference picture here that I also had in my survey, which tells you that you brought this on yourself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I want to make it, really. So this picture here is also what I started with on my computer. I am already looking into like screen recording and showing you how I make like all the measurements and stuff. But it's really too much to do for Halloween, so it will have to be next year. Uh, hopefully in time the projects will get a little bit more professional. Okay, so I will just cover uh, the confusing stuff. So, I start out with one of these files on my computer. This is from the wiki, so the Dead by Daylight wiki page. So what I will do is first look at that reference picture where a person or character is holding the prop that I want to make. Then I get one of those guys. Uh, I do not know what it's called in English, but maybe I will have it on screen. It's one of these foldy measuring and use it to get the pose right. Which means that I will literally stand in my workshop with this thing folded out. Um, until I have vaguely the pose that I need and then, of course, since this is a measuring thing, it already has the length that I will go for. In this case, I decided that I want to go with 90 centimeters overall, this is why I marked it here. Uh, which means I would be holding somewhere in between 90 and maybe 75, somewhere here for the handle. Those are my measurements based on my height of 164 centimeters. So if you're tall, you might have to make a bigger prop. It's just, it would look ridiculous if I was going to use like a huge axe that I couldn't wield. <laughs> so equally as ridiculous as like a two meter person wielding like a 90 centimeter teeny tiny axe. So yeah, you will have to um, kind of scale that to your person. Once you have your complete measurement, you can go ahead and put that either on a printout that is this height. So in that case, I just leave out the zero if you're working in centimeters. So I scaled it in my uh, editing tool to nine centimeters and then just started measuring out the different parts. I also measured this distance here just you know, it's not set in stone. If it looks dumb when you build it, you can always add a little bit more or take something off. But I like to have kind of a baseline what to work with. You can go ahead and make a beautiful sketch like this. So this is what I'm going to cut out in the next few minutes. And then transfer it onto the material that I will show you right now. This beautiful stuff here is grey board. In some online shops they also register it as book binding board because it is often used when people make their own books where they put it in the cover to give it a little bit more sturdiness. You can see this is not like the typical cardboard. I can show you... wait, let me just grab a regular cardboard. There we go. This is from just any kind of delivery box. This is the grey board. Let's see how close we can bring this. That's about as close as we get. So, you can see there is a lot of air in here in between the layers of cardboard. This does not have any room in between the layers. So, this is what we're going to use today. I would say it is, well, of course it is a bit pricier than just taking a leftover Amazon box and building with it, right? Um, but on the other hand, it is sturdier and it is definitely not as expensive as... I don't know, PVA foam or even wood if you can bring this in some convention. Um, which brings me to the next point. This stuff here is convention safe. So it is just like PVA foam, 
um, since this is essentially paper or cardboard, you can get into almost any convention with weapons that are built from this stuff. So for the handle of our axe, we're going to use these. That is, as you can see, some paper rolls. Those are not from paper towels and they are not from toilet paper. This stuff is actually, well, I don't want to say stolen because it is trash. <laughs> so if it's trash, I can take it. That is my rule. Anyway, it is from, um, from the supermarket. Depending on where you live in the world, you will see that the produce aisles in your supermarket offer little plastic baggies. And when this roll of baggies is empty, this is what is left in the holder. And whenever I go shopping, I check these first to, um, well, take what is left. Nobody's ever stopped me, so I know they're gonna just throw this out, so whatever, right? If for some reason you cannot get these, so let's say your country doesn't use plastic baggies for produce, then you can also collect the inside of this, that is cellophane. Um, you can also take the inside of an aluminum foil roll and then just use that. This looks like that. Um, there is a bit of glue left over where the cellophane was adhered, but essentially it's pretty much the same. It's a bit thinner, but if it's going to be covered with cardboard clay, then I think you're going to be fine. Sturdiness-wise, they are about the same. Um, I think... Yeah, that axe that we had, didn't we build an axe before? That was made of something like the inside of like cellophane roll. It wasn't very thick, but it was sturdy enough. Okay, that was about all I wanted to say before we get going. So I will put on some nice music now and get crafting for you guys. I will probably not stop by at the end of the video um, and probably not in the next one if I have my schedule in mind at all. So yeah, I hope you have fun watching this video. Don't forget to press the like button. Alright guys, so you're gonna keep watching, I'm gonna start building and I hope you have fun. Bye bye!
Hey. 
Thank you. 